our intention for the tutorial one, uh, we know that a lot of people start using uh, GDRA, IDA, or many other study and analysis tool. But in fact, you better to be get used to um, dynamic tool first. And then the later phase, uh, of course, once you understand GDB, once you get used to dynamic tools, probably you, you uh, and particularly in the very early phase of these labs, uh, you can actually accelerate your debugging skills for the later labs. But it seems a lot of people start jumping into other tools that they already know, or IDE and Jidra that help a lot significantly for the lab, for the lab. Uh, also, it's really up to you to use those tools, but we highly recommend to get used to GDP first. And then from the second lab, we're going to introduce another uh, set of static analysis tool and also extension of the GDB. So that once you understand the core idea of GDB, uh, you can actually extend the features of GDB, particularly focus on exploitation writing. So particularly, we're going to focus on phone DBG. And there are a lot of search variants, but we, we're going to focus on this particular extension mainly because it's one of the well-maintained and very robust tools that we can rely on uh, in our site. And Jidra is a good alternative to IDA. Uh, IDA is interactive debugger, uh, so that once you open up the binary, they can even provide the original, I'll say, lifted version of original source code, meaning that you don't have to just deal with the binary, the machine instructions itself because Jidra try to hard to lifting those in binary list of machine instruction to the original C source code so that you can understand, you can approach the problem through the source code uh, as well. And then this week we're gonna uh, focusing on, and, and this is another important task for this week, is how to write shell code. So once you get used to GDB and their machine code instructions uh, in previous lab, hopefully you have better chance to solve this uh, shell code. Uh, the shellcode basically, when, when you are exploiting a vulnerability, which means once you hijack the control flow of the program, there, there are certain universal payload that you want to use. This is what we call shellcode. It's nothing but uh, the payload to invoke the shell itself, so that once shell is invoked, you can do whichever you want on behalf of the pre process privileges. For example, you uh, get the shell, which means launch the shell code and get the control for hijacking of a one of the challenges that we provide, which is typically owned by certain user, such as lab one and lab two or specific challenges. And once you have these privileges, you now just invoke another process to get the flag. So once you get the flag with this particular permission, so particular UID, then you can uh, submit as a proof of solving these challenges to our system. So this week, uh, we're going to focus on writing shellcode uh, so that once you prepare this shellcode, you can actually use them for the next few labs. Uh, for the rest of the labs, we need certain shellcode that which is common component for exploitation writing. So I think this is a good way to prepare all the necessary tools uh, at this point. So let me quickly show you or navigate this how phone dbg works and hopefully you can have a one great impression of how does it look like and then i'm gonna uh, show you a list of the features of phone dbg uh, of course you can easily navigate in this tutorial and find out the uh, most important list of the component that we are using all the time um, by yourself but i'm gonna see, uh, show you how things work uh, in a little bit more detail my VM and I just log into our server uh, in this case uh, lab 2 and we jump between them so anyhow if you go to the tutorial uh, you can type either gdb phone dbg if you want uh, and just execute one program uh, in this case um, the phone dbg is launched there are various commands that you can launch here uh, most of them are really for your convenience and all of them is that can be done in GDB but just for the convenience purpose phone DGB provide 
many other extensions and utility. So one, one of the great examples is star. Uh, when we are debugging certain program, uh, we launch the program, set it the breakpoint at the main, and then run the program. This is a very tedious and repetitive uh, action. So the phone DBG provides a wrapper of command called star. So basically set up the corresponding breakpoint if, uh, on the main and launch the program and stop there. So as you can see here, uh, this is a context menu. So whenever you stop, you will see this particular config uh, output basically displaying or summarizing the state of the program. Uh, as you can see on the top, or you can see from the legend, uh, basically display some of the interesting colors. For example, this address space or data pointing to these regions that we are interested in, whether stack or heap or code sections and data and etc. in some of the permissions and we don't need data. And given this, in fact, by looking at this data without parsing the actual value of each register, you can kind of have a better idea. Hey, this is pointing to some of the code section, this is pointing to stack, and this is immediate value, and etc. And you can see some of the uh, the code section is pointing to here, and etc. Right? And for a certain code, uh, although this is not super correct uh, in current setting in our lab, uh, because we kind of mix the usage of the code and data in our current setting. But here, you can see this is the actual code section, which is referenced at the main plus 17. In this case, you can even see corresponding instructions assemble, disassemble. So in this case, uh, if you disassemble in this case here, the instruction pointer pointing to here, and the very first instruction that you can see is actually nicely matched with, you can see in this panel. So again, this, this one represent, this particular window represent the state of the register. And you can see all the chains in this case. For example, this stack value, con this stack address, uh, contain this immediate value call one. And when it comes to uh, this assembly window, uh, one of the nice features is ni nicely um, divided between those blocks that you can see control flow changes from here to here. So which means when, whenever you start executing the first instruction, you have to reach one of the last instruction in the basic block so you can easily analyze or navigate uh, in your eyes. So starting from here, likely uh, you can uh, go to the next call instructions or you can go to uh, other instructions, separate point and jump there. And if you have a, uh, happen to have a source code, you can also navigate like this. In fact, again, all these nice things are, are also feasible by using pure GDB. But again, this is for the convenience purpose. Uh, when it comes to stack, also nicely visualized uh, like this. Again, all these numbers pointing to the stack, all these addresses are pointing to the stack. So that you can see the corresponding legend with the stack. And one nice thing here, uh, it also match the state of the register. In this case, the top of the stack is pointed by ESP, likely the, all the time in this case. And uh, base pointer or frame pointer is pointing to the bottom of the stack, is your local record. So anything you reserve inside the main function so will be allocated in this region, starting from EVP or on top of EVP or the way up to uh, stack pointer. Uh, as, as you can see, whenever whenever they see this pointer value, uh, in, in this case is the address of the stack, and you can and this address of the stack pointing or contain uh, another stack address and then this address contain another stack address all the way down here. So you can see, you can consider the local variable contain the uh, address of another variables and contain address. You, you can consider it a string pointer uh, in, in C string uh, in C. So you can ultimately get it, get it the C strings at the end. And similarly in, in these locations, you can see some of the code address uh, recorded in this local frame as part of this main. So before we actually executing main, we already proceed up to the offset 17. And if you disassemble the main uh, function, in fact, we actually stop at this main. 
right already up to here and all this data is already recorded in the local frame uh, because these are the compiler stuff or we what we typically call, call prologue uh, will be automatically generated and when you're actually debugging most of the time these are not interesting part uh, so that's why on dvg and gtv when they set the breakpoint at the function level they're going to proceed to the first instruction corresponding to the user code in this case uh, the if statement of the fcat so basically if you if you parse this one in the ast probably they're going to call uh, the, the very call happening in priority in uh, fcat right so you can imagine this is an if statement the call uh, is prepared for fcat and all the way down here you can also match the corresponding argument in this case buffer here and the size of the buffer in this case ox8.800 uh, and they also get us some input uh, about uh, standard in which is a global uh, variable uh, in this case we can actually fetch this uh, variable uh, in in here in ex and start putting into or passing in the third argument of the fcat uh, uh, there, there are a lot of interesting comment or oh, in, in the in the top, in the bottom of um, windows you often see this stack call frame starting from libc start libc this is one of the call from the library and now finally invoke domain but in fact before the main is executed uh, there are a lot of procedures happening in the libc and this is uh, represented by this current call stack and but when you're dealing with this i'll say stripped binary unlikely you're going to see all this nice information about the binary but whenever you have you will see uh, all these nice information as well now many of the instructions are pretty much the same you can go to the next instruction uh, uh, in this case we we go to the next uh, line in this case uh, the fcat is executed at this point Right. And if you press Ctrl C, you can also send the signal uh, to the process. Uh, in this case, the FCAD is executed, the program is waiting at this point, and this is right before we are sending anything to FCAD. And you can imagine this process is waiting on the system call. So if you want, uh, you can set the breakpoint here. You can see the call stack pointing to the main uh, 41. If you want, you can parse like this uh, this is the instruction that will be returned back from this uh, call if you want you can you can set the breakpoint uh, in the main and similarly you can proceed uh, again this one is waiting for our input you can press something uh, then now we turn back from here so many of them are exactly same and one nice thing here say we, we want to navigate a little bit uh, so that uh, for example, what would be the interesting value you want to check? Say this, it seems like there is a buffer symbol is binding to EAX. Say uh, we're going to telescope here so that we can actually see the contents here. Uh, this one is actually not correctly or or too precisely represented because our in our current setting, our stack information uh, stack locations is actually executable. That that's why they consider this a code section, uh, but in fact, it's actually data. Uh, as you can see, this is a con this buffer contains the data that we just put it. Uh, but how can you know which memory is allocated for what? In this case, you can type this V map. Uh, in this case, uh, the BondBG represent uh, the corresponding permissions and mapping information of each binary. In this case, you can imagine the target is mapped starting from 5,000 all the way to 8,000 and then you can see heap is map, map it right after and other libc library and corresponding information of order and stack is allocated at the bottom and there are a lot of uh, OS injected sections as well uh, but some of, some of them are not used widely mostly for compatibility reasons and video, VDSO is one of the popular reasons that is actually required for many uh, other system code that require fast performance or compatibility as well. What's inter interesting here is that this guy, this process map most of the section as read write executable. 
or executable. In this case, read executable. Uh, likely, this is the first section, the core section of the target is actually correctly mapped. But what about the data in, in this case? The global data in this case actually map in the executable as well. Uh, we don't need uh, data is actually mapped in executable as well. And also some of the global data that you can see from the target uh, is actually contain the right uh, read write executable permissions. In other words, once you inject something here in data, you can actually start executing like instructions similar to stack as well. That's why we can inject something to the buffer and this program will execute the buffer accordingly. Um, uh, there among many other uh, instruction, uh, there are a lot of Nexus series. Uh, for example, similar to uh, execute the next instruction one by one, you can execute the program until jump, uh, until return, until system calls, uh, until call instructions, and etc. All these similar uh, type of instruction. Uh, if you want, you can you can navigate the regi uh, register. Uh, information of the register in this case like this and uh, again uh, these telescope instructions a way to visualize certain data uh, in, in the very concise manner this is one of the useful uh, command provided from phone DG. Uh, if you want you can also search pretty easily in this case if you type AAA uh, they're gonna look for the AAA strings in the process memory and as you can see, the original buffer is pointing or containing uh, this data inside. And there are certainly other locations in heap uh, that contain our data as well. You can imagine uh, that whenever you type something in here, uh, this is nicely buffered uh, in libc. That's why you can find those information as well. Uh, I think that's more, uh, mostly about from dbg. If you want to type from dbg to find our corresponding uh, help messages uh, as well.